Welcome to Hogwarts Legacy. You're a new student at the famed School of Witchcraft and Wizardry. You will then need to attend classes, and you do have some catching up to do, as you were starting Hogwarts late as a fifth year. Master Spells. Befriend new allies. Journey across a landscape never seen before. Uncover ancient secrets. Combat mystical threats. Learn long forgotten mysteries. Become the witch or wizard you want to be as you leave your unique mark on the wizarding world. Yeah, I don't think I'm cut out for this stuff. I'm just gonna stick with the muggles and get my wizarding fix from the Harry Potter baking book. The official Harry Potter baking book by Joanna Farrow takes us to Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry to sample some magical recipes inspired by the wizarding world of Harry Potter. Now, I never really got into Harry Potter, but Hogwarts Legacy looks really good and I'm really excited to play it, so I figure, hey, why not get into the Harry Potter mood through a cookbook? I've been wanting to do this cookbook for a while now, but I keep pushing it back because I absolutely suck at baking and this cookbook is all about baking. The recipes are divided into two chapters, savory and sweet, with each recipe having a difficulty rating ranging from beginner to complex, but knowing me, I would probably struggle with all of them. The writing in this cookbook is pretty straightforward. Each recipe is accompanied by Harry Potter factoids, character quotes, cooking tips, and a sprinkling of stills from the movie series. I actually found these really interesting, even with the little knowledge that I have of the wizarding world. It made me appreciate all the tiny world building details, and I especially like reading the factoids about the movies and the behind the scenes pieces of trivia that I never would have known otherwise. The overall design and page layouts are really well done and very fun looking. The pages kind of remind me of those teen magazines with the playful fonts and icons, colorful callouts, and pop of vibrant colors with imagery. The food photos are some of the best I've ever seen in terms of tying the recipes visually to the theme. The food looks very creative and whimsical, and the accompanying background elements really capture that Harry Potter vibe. The food looks recognizably Harry Potter, but like a lot of pretty looking baked goods, there are a lot of arts and crafts involved, especially with the more difficult desserts. Fortunately, the cookbook even has a template section at the end, which provides outlines that you can trace and cut for the intricate shapes found in some of the recipes. You just need to scan or photocopy them and make sure it comes out the same size, or you can just cut the book itself if you're a crazy person. Whoop! I've procrastinated long enough. Time to face my baking fears, so I invite you to see if I feast or fail with these three recipes from the Harry Potter baking book. Wish me luck! Okay, let's start with something easy. If I'm gonna do baking magic, then I need some wand breadsticks. These are just sticks of dough, so there's no way I'm gonna mess this up, right? To start, mix together one and a quarter cups of bread flour, a quarter teaspoon of active dry yeast, one teaspoon of dried mixed herbs, a tablespoon of olive oil, and half a teaspoon of salt. Then add in one third cup of warm water and mix it all together to form a dough. If the dough is too dry and crumbly, add a bit more water. Transfer the dough to a floured surface and knead it for about 10 minutes until it's smooth and elastic. Gotta build that gluten. Place the dough in a lightly floured bowl, cover in plastic wrap, and leave it in a warm place for 30 minutes to get the dough to rise. As you can see, mine didn't really rise, probably because it was freezing cold the day I made this, but I even tried putting it in the oven over a tray of boiling water to simulate a warm temperature, but nope, not happening. Oh well, how bad could it be? Divide the dough into eight pieces and roll them out with your hands until you get them wand shaped. Kind of tricky at first, but you quickly get the feel of it. Make sure each wand is around 12 inches long with one end being much pointier than the other. You can get as funky as you want with the wand designs, but for me I just tried to copy the designs from the book, but mine are going to be a lot sloppier, of course. Lastly, brush each wand with some almond or oat milk, then pop it in the oven at 425 degrees Fahrenheit for 8 to 10 minutes or until it's firm. Meanwhile, let's make a magical dip. In a bowl, combine half a cup of yogurt with half a cup of mayo. Add in some black olive tapenade and swirl it in. You can use vegan versions of these as the cookbook suggests. Serve this alongside your wonderful wizard wand. Looks like they're straight out of Ollivanders. Now that I got my wand, time to tackle something a bit meatier. Let's try to conjure up the Great Hall Chicken Pie. Starting with the filling, we're going to melt a quarter stick of unsalted butter along with a tablespoon of vegetable oil. Then we're going to fry up 10 boneless, skinless chicken thighs that are seasoned with salt and pepper. 
Fry these up in two batches until lightly browned, then transfer to a plate. In the same pan, add in two chopped onions, three bay leaves, and two sliced celery sticks and cook these for three minutes. Then add in four tablespoons of all-purpose flour and cook while stirring for two minutes. Little by little add in two and a half cups of chicken stock and place the chicken back in along with a handful of tarragon leaves and let this simmer for 30 minutes. In a different pan, melt another quarter stick of unsalted butter and fry up two cups of sliced mushrooms for about five minutes until they're brown. After the chicken mixture has cooked for 30 minutes, add in the mushrooms with a quarter cup of heavy cream and remove the pan from the heat to cool. Now let's put the pie together. On a nine and a half inch pie plate, roll out a ready-made short crust pastry so that it hangs off the edges a bit. Spoon in the cooled filling and make sure to remove the three bay leaves. Don't want a bite of that. For the top, roll out another sheet of pastry and wet the edges. Cut this into about three quarter inch wide strips and lattice this over the pie. My lattice work isn't the nicest, but better than I expected. All the excess dough hanging off the edge, you can trim those off and pinch the pastry together all around. Glaze the top with a beaten egg and bake this pie in the oven at 400 degrees Fahrenheit for about 40 minutes until nice and golden. Then you're ready to bring your chicken pie to the tables of the Great Hall and share a meal with the class. For dessert, what better place to go to than Honeyduke's Sweet Shop to try some Honeyduke's Hall Cake. Let's see how these candy covered donuts turn out. To make the donuts, we gotta mix four cups of bread flour with half a stick of diced up unsalted butter and mix those up with your fingertips. Then add in two teaspoons of active dry yeast, one teaspoon of salt, one third cup of granulated white sugar, two teaspoons of vanilla extract, and one cup of warm milk. Mix it all up and add a dash of milk if the dough is too dry and crumbly. Transfer it all to a floured surface and knead for 10 minutes until smooth and elastic. Again, gotta build that gluten. If you're gluten intolerant, I apologize. Here, I'll censor this out for you. When done, transfer it to a lightly oiled bowl and cover with plastic wrap. Leave this in a warm place and let it rise for about one and a half hours. It's supposed to double in size, but mine didn't rise that much. It definitely did better than my wand sticks though. Separate the dough into 16 equal pieces and roll each one up to a ball. Place them on a parchment paper lined baking sheet spaced apart and cover with a lightly oiled plastic wrap and again, leave in a warm place to let it double in size for about an hour and a half then pop these in the oven at 375 degrees Fahrenheit for about 12 minutes until they've risen and are golden in color. Did mine rise? Nope. These look less like donuts and more like dinner rolls, but the show must go on. Make a small hole on the side of each donut. I'm just using the thick end of a chopstick for mine. Then with a piping bag and tube, squeeze in some strawberry or raspberry jam in each cake. Now to make a thin glaze, mix together four tablespoons of icing sugar with two tablespoons of water in a bowl. After that, on a medium plate, mix together half a teaspoon of ground cinnamon with two third cup of granulated white sugar to create our cinnamon sugar topping. Then brush the sugar glaze on top of each donut and roll the glazed part over the cinnamon sugar. Pile up them cakes and scatter some candies like acid pops, chocolate frogs, sherbet lemons, or in my case, birdie bots, every flavored jelly beans, but really you can use whatever candy you like. Sprinkle on some pink sugar sprinkles and some stars and edible glitter and you have an incredible pile of Honey Duke's Hall Cakes. Let's try these out, shall we? Starting with the wand breadsticks, these are super fun to hold and play with. It definitely puts me in a wizarding mood, that's for sure. Taste-wise, I mean, they're just breadsticks. Sure, they got some herbs in them, but really, it's just bread. Let's dip it in for some flavor. Hey, this dip ain't bad. I appreciate that the creamy olive tapenade has a very unique flavor. I like it, but I don't think it's for everyone, especially if you don't like olives. The cookbook also suggested other dip pairings, such as pesto, cheese sauce, and salsa, which I tried. Out of all of those, I like pesto best, but I like the olive sauce the most. These wand sticks would also pair really well with soups, but really the best thing about them is that you get to play with your food. Now let's dig in to this Great Hall Chicken Pie. Can't wait to sink into this. Taste-wise, pretty good. The filling has the perfect creamy consistency and I'm loving the mouthfeel of the chicken with the other veggies and the tarragon gives it great flavor. The bottom crust is a bit soggy, but the top crust has a very nice crispy texture. This thing is super filling, so it's a great dish to share with your friends. 
Now look at this magical mountain of goodness. Let's see how these Honeydukes Hall cakes taste. Yeah, kinda what I expected. It's definitely not fluffy like a donut and more bready. I tried to squeeze in as much filling as possible, but I noticed that the jelly pockets weren't that deep, probably because the bread wasn't airy and lacked elasticity. If you're able to get your dough to rise and do this properly, unlike me, I'm sure that this would actually taste really good. But the filling combined with the glaze and the sugar sprinkles still made it pretty enjoyable. Heck, anything bombarded with sugar is all right by me. Just make sure you don't get any of the bad jelly beans. Vomit flavor? Ugh. Final verdict for the Harry Potter baking book, a whimsical surprise with a tasty prize if you can get your dough to rise. Okay, let's talk about the jelly beans. All the fruit ones are good, but here's my micro reviews of all the bad ones. Grass, kinda bland, rotten egg, friggin' stanky, sausage, impressively sausagey, soap, kinda nice actually, vomit, sour in a bad way, earwax, unpleasant, umaminess, dirt, smells horrible. Booger, kinda bland too. Black pepper, ooh, spicy. Earthworm, absolutely disgusting. This one is the worst one by far. Ugh.